This lesson video is for 8.7 day 2. We're going to focus on factoring a difference of two squares. Now remember difference means subtraction so you'll definitely see a subtraction sign and then squares obviously means that you can take the square root of those numbers. So focus your attention on the key concept box in the on the top of this page. It's also on the top of your note sheet. Um, a squared minus b squared. That is the common form for the difference of two, two squares. Now, in order to factor that, we're just going to take a plus b and multiply it by a minus b. So what will make more sense is this example right here. x squared minus 64. Well, we know that x squared is just x times itself. x squared. And then 64 is 8 squared. So what you just want to do is just do a x plus 8 times x minus 8. And that's the shortcut. It's really fast. This one, this next one's a little bit harder, but let's, still not too bad. Let's look at it. Uh, 25x squared is just 5x times the second, or to the second. And then 36 is 6 squared. So now what you do is you just take the 5x and the 6 and add them, and take the 5x and the 6 and subtract them. So here's a really nice step-by-step -step, um, directions for you. first thing that you want to do is take the square root of the first term. So that's what we did. That's how we got the x. Then you put that in the front of both sets of parentheses. Now take the square root of the last term. Square root of 64 is 8. Put that in the last spot of the parentheses and then just make 1 plus and 1 minus and that's it. So let's use all of those little uh, steps to do example three and again I will show you the x way, the x method to do it after this just in case you're not following with a shortcut. So let's rewrite this. z squared is just z to the second and 9 is 3 to the second. So they're both perfect squares. What you do is you take the z, put it in front of both spots, take the 3, put it in the back of both spots and just do a plus and a minus. The reason why this works is because the plus and the minus multiply to get a negative, and behind the scenes, the 3z and the minus 3z are canceling. So that's what's going on. And that's the actual answer for this. It's really, really fast. Now I'd like to show you the x method just in case, and write this down if you would like to do this way instead. But I do want you to show the other way as well on your paper. Um, now, in order to use the x method, it must be a trinomial. So, if the middle term is missing, then obviously the number in front of that variable that's not there is a zero, because that's how it got, went away, it got rid of. So now, take the negative nine, put it up top, take the zero, put it on bottom. Now what we're thinking to ourselves is, what numbers do we multiply to get negative nine, but add to get zero? Now the factors of nine are just negative one and nine, negative 9 and 1, negative 3 and 3. And when you add the first two sets, you don't get 0. But when you add negative 3 and positive 3, you do get 0. That's supposed to be a positive 3. Now you take those and you put them in the parentheses. And that's the exact same thing as the left side, except it doesn't really matter where the plus and the minus are as long as they're there. So the answer, the factored form of z squared minus 9 is z plus 3 times z minus 3. Now let's learn how to factor something that has a little bit more involved process. Um, basically what you want to do is rewrite it again, but now there's coefficients in front of the x squared instead of just a regular 1. Um, so what you want to do is figure out what squared multiplies to get that, and what squared multiplies to get the 81. So 4x times itself gives us 16x squared, and 9 squared gives us 81. So now what you want to do is put 4x in the front of both set of parentheses, and put the, the 9 in the back space of both, put a plus and a minus, and call it done. 4x plus 9 times 4x minus 9. Now I'll show you the slide divide bottoms up method just in case you want to see. The shortcut is obviously faster. 
but I do want to show you the other way just in case you prefer this way. So again, like the previous problem, we don't have a middle term, so there must be a zero there. The first thing that I want to do is take the 16 and multiply it to the negative 81. So we get x squared plus 0x minus 1,296. I know this is a big number, but basically you just have to take the square root. So we'll put the negative 1,296 up there, the zero down there. The square root of that number is 36. And in order to add to get 0, you must have a positive 36 and a negative 36. So you take those and put them in the parentheses. Now we have to divide by the number we slide. So divide by 16 and reduce. So that gives us 9 fourths. And the last thing is bottoms up. And we find out that we get the exact same thing as the other method. 4x plus 9 times 4x minus 9. Alright, stick with me, we're almost done. Now, we're going to have to factor out a number. When you factor out the GCF of a polynomial, sometimes the expression that remains is a perfect square trinomial or the difference of two squares, which is exactly what we've done in this section. Then we can factor the expression to get our final answer. So, rewrite the original like usual. The GCF, I have showed you this process the past couple sections, but I'll show you again. Write the prime factors of each term. So we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times g times g, and then we have 2 times 3. The numbers in common are 2 and 3, so that means the GCF is 6. So what you want to do is take the 6 and put it in front. Now, what goes in the parentheses is the rest of the expressions, except, you know, we haven't circled it. So look over to the right again. The 2, the 2, the g, and the g are all left. So multiply those and you get 4g squared. And there's nothing left in the line of the 6, so we assume that there's a 1 there because, you know, there's always a 1 when it's invisible. So now we're all good. And what's really nice, hopefully you're noticing, the 4g squared and the 1 are perfect squares. So let's keep the 6 outside. Now let's square this, the 4g squared. What times itself gives us 4g squared? The answer is 2g. Basically, we're taking the square root. What squared gives us 1? Well, 1. So now, shortcut method, 2g plus 1 and 2g minus 1. And that's the answer, factored form of the given trinomial, or actually a binomial. Um, so now, I could show you the slide divide method. I'm guessing that you probably don't want to see it right now, but if any of you do want to see it, I can personally show you tomorrow during the classwork time. Feel free to rewind, pause, all of that to catch up on your notes. Try the lesson check right now if you'd like to. Um, if you feel like it, you can do it. If not, do it tomorrow and make sure you have done the 8.7 day one lesson check. See you soon.